kids. How you all doing around here? Hi. Chapter 43. We're going to get through. Evian. Okay. Chapter 43 is entitled Kirk as Rambo and Developing Motocross Years. Sylvester Stallone's first film, no, not the softcore porno, The Party at Kitty and Studs, but his first film, um, feature film. That's the clarifying word I was looking for. In the long line of his Rambo series franchise, there was First Blood, which came out in 1982. I was nine years old, and this film would prove to be a very seminal picture for me, like for many oh young boys, I presume. The slow, deliberate tying of the red bandana as the camera panning on Rambo's flexing muscles. As he rippled, dripping with sweat, doing a double reverse bicep pump pose for warfare was not only homoerotic, well, maybe not yet to me at this time. No, it was purely an adrenaline-provoking scene for an angry little fellow who had no power of his own or muscles. <laughs> Nature versus nurture, along with ingenious marketing wartime shimmers interwoven with propagandized, glorified, imperialistic, corporate-sponsored agendas, along with natural resource grubbing, and the all-pervasive global aggrandizement imbued with white man-like fervor, i.e. the quintessential omnipresent bullying of America was not even on my radar yet. I was born into it, hence unconscious of all its ploys. Hell, English is my first language. I lived in Kansas for fuck's sake, and I was practically born with a hot dog coming out of my mouth and an American flag stapled to my forehead and actually almost shat an apple pie once Around four years old, straight out my rectum. It was perfect visual fodder for a motherfucking angry nine-year-old boy born into ignorance that wanted vengeance and wanted to blow shit up. What a great potential recruitment tool for an American fascist global terrorist force. Rambo was like the second coming of Christ. I loved how non-compliant Rambo was and how he made everyone suffer for being complete fucking fascist idiots. They drew first blood. I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. What most people call hell, he calls home. This fictional representation of what a Green Bray was, or is, would be personified through John J. Rambo's character. It was the only source of factual information I had stumbled across surrounding these Green Bray killing machines. It would find me try, try, tying torn red t-shirts around my head, wiping dirt off my face and wielding a long survival knife with its own miniature survival sewing kit fitted into the screw-off campus. I did kind of screw off on campus. I meant compass! Sorry. Top. Don't get embarrassed, it's okay. All right, take 500,000 and two. I mean, this was the coolest knife ever. Upon removing the top of it, there was waterproof matches, needles, and thread, just in case you had to sew up your own arm, like Rambo in the movie. 
This is just what a nine-year-old boy needs roaming around the woods in suburban Kansas. Ten more minutes. Love it. Wielding my Rambo replica survival knife, I would take to the woods not too far away from the back of my mother's duplex in Overland Park and, and swipe it into the air and stab trees with a ferocious and seething and repeating my hero on route. Ain't you far like that, me? I'm pretty sure I was imagining the throats of my parents. How I didn't turn out to be like Ted Bundy. It's still beyond me. So my fascination for Green Beret is due to the recent popularity of Ramble, coupled with Cook's timely admonishment of being part of the illustrious, infamous killing machines amidst my botched cognitive apparatus that was stacked like a flimsy house of cards from all my glorious childhood trauma was unbeknownst to me. All I needed was a little bit more of a shove, which was provided with my hopeful romanticism for motocross stardom, and my vulnerability in believing that Kirk was all the things that he said he was. Not all things in with a Hollywood-like perfectionism. I would experience firsthand while spending years with Kirk that not only does time out on the open road tend to bring out the worst in people, but also the truth. There's just... There just was no differentiation between my family and the suffering I experienced. I was like an egg in the frying pan. Not enough life had happened or been lived to create an opportunity to acquire the knowledge to place a spatula between their behavior and me. I had no way of knowing that being pissed off all the time is not normal for a child. Conversely, anger is one of the most common emotions for a child who's being constantly exposed to sexual, physical, mental, and emotional abuse. Who knew? <laughs> right? It, I, I was psychologically enmeshed into the fucked way of being. It doesn't take a social scientist to deconstruct the Sisyphus-like nature of our species. Propensity for generational ignorance and violence. Our species has been at war and doing dumb shit since Jump Street. Johnny? No. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Baptism. The power of impressionability an older man has on the mind of a young boy is a marvelous wonder. Look around and tell me if you think different. Hail propaganda. Be a skinner. And our dark lord Satan. Hail with that said most adults are dipshits. Why? Well, because, you guessed it, kids, most people, if they are reared by dipshits, which I dare to say might just in fact be most of you, welcome. This only creates a recycling, visceral reincarnation. <laughs> Om Nami Champi. If you will, that propels a propensity to become one. Voila. You've got it. A colossal dipshit. Hence, generational past, or generation past, and the real history of humanity. And the ongoing sore asses of Greek boys. The odds are just stacked against us. You. Humans. Oy vey. War, along with his mindless female cohorts, Dr. Baker, the pedophilic, or pedophile, extraordinaire, and Joyce, the emotionally unavailable neglectful mother, and being further blessed with having someone like Kirk, 
who is going to make me into a national motocross champion. And that he was even also a green beret was just the childhood compadre I needed. Someone who might be able to train me to secure a proper level of sadistic redemption that had been similarly imposed against my own will by these three adults. I needed to know what this guy knew. I was just too good to... <laughs> I like it when I do a Freudian slip. <laughs> he was an incest too. I wasn't too good. No, I'll do pretty much anything. It was just too good to be true, but hey, anything is possible when you've got Jesus on your side. During the I'll be at brief hotel skirmish, right now, going back to the fight where Kirk and Kirk were. Mmm! Uh. As the Kirk duo seemed to de-escalate. No, I, I need to start that over. See, that's what happens when I just went over the top with my, um... Okay, during the albeit brief hotel skirmish, the gods rapidly intervened to change the course of my life as the Kirk duo seemed to de-escalate the battle as rapidly as it had escalated. It was nearing dusk and we were preparing to go carb up at the local pizza for the big race. Oh. When Kirk Payne jumped into the shower, I pulled Kirk aside. Kirk, can I ask you a question? He looked at me with that distractingly crooked nose that is so completely fucking crooked that the tip nearly touches his left cheek, creating an almost perfect you. The nose awkwardly accents his caring yet fierce, fiery, intense, trauma-laden brown eyes that also have a similarly, oddly enough, dopey, droopy similarity to Sylvester Stallone's eyes, thereby making all the Rambo potentiality all the more probable. Of course, Cook's facial features are accompanied with a tobacco stain grill and pointy teeth from a career-ending face plant that saw his face needing reconstructive surgery and his jaw wired shut. This makes his grill come to a projected point that creates a big yellow stained V. Maybe he wasn't as handsome as Mr. Stallone. Yeah, that is the truth. However, Kirk's grill sort of resembles what a tobacco-chewing barracuda or golfer, as I uh, think I may have mentioned earlier, would look like. Gotta watch out for those fucking Mormons soliciting motherfuckers. I have to say, he almost looks like an obscure postmodern art piece. I got that inspiration from a uh, full metal jacket when the drill sergeant's yelling at Gomer. Private Pyle, we'll get to him shortly. <sighs> and to the question, Cook responded, Yeah, bud, what is it? I looked deep in his brown eyes and asked, Are you really a Green Beret? There was a long pause. At this point, I don't know if it was him pausing for dramatic effect or if he was potentially negotiating and could s consider an hour how his answer could steer, direct, and shape our relationship. Yes. Okay, this is going to be a longer chapter. <laughs> and it's chapter four to three. We'll come back to it again in town at 43.8. And it's Champion Cookie's Rainbow in developing motocross years. Yo, no lot of fuck, Willie. I could have been a contender. I could have done something with my life. And I did. I did this right here. You can buy it on the Kindle. For two ninety nine. you can buy it on the Kindle. And I can get myself a good motherfucking haircut. Boogie down. 